fixing my hair. Oh, and we're live. So um, when I was talking to Dr. James last week, uh, I, we got this idea perhaps to cover uh, Fatima. We were we had come off three uh, martyrdom themed movies, which are, you know, three in a row. It's a little rough. It's a little rough on the uh, on the spirit there. And uh, we were thinking of something a little more uplifting. So we got this idea for Fatima. And then um, we were looking at the possibility of having other people come on the show because uh, two out of three I've done by myself and Martha was there for um, uh, Paul, Apostle of Christ. And so we got the idea this time again for a panel and uh, Dr. James was uh, good enough to uh, find some people here who were, uh, were more than happy to be on the show tonight. And I appreciate it. We've got uh, Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Leopold. Uh, so hello to uh, Lawrence. Thanks for, for coming on. And we've got uh, Debbie Bird Smith, um, who's uh, enjoying some warm weather, something I specifically am not enjoying right now, but uh, that, that's perfectly okay. So uh, welcome both of you to the show. Um, and I guess this new uh, sub-thread of uh, the Divine Will era, um, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, come and uh, chat movies with me. Oh, we, we appreciate it, too. Thank, Thank you, you for the invite. Yeah. So, oh, wait, so this, go ahead. Lead us on, my friend. So um, I think we should just get right to it. Uh, we've got Fatima, and uh, if you're okay, uh, we'll get it going. Awesome. All right. Awesome. So uh, for those who might be watching or will catch the replay, uh, I always like to make mention where you can find this movie. It's currently on Netflix. Um, and so it, it's real easy to find. Uh, some of the other movies that we've covered, we'd have to go to some of the smaller streaming services. But uh, we generally try to pick movies that are accessible uh, to the general population. You know, you may not have to spend too much money, um, this, that, or the other. So uh, this was right there in Netflix. And uh it gave me an excuse. Yeah, and it gave me an excuse to use Netflix, which I haven't had uh, in quite a long time. Uh, I've been kind of disappointed with them for a while, but uh, this made up for it. And it's the story of, well, it's the true story of the occurrences that uh, took place in Fatima, Portugal in 1917, where three uh, small children um, gave their account of their visitations from the um the virgin mary and her conversations with them um her uh, you know the, the information that she disclosed um some some things that they weren't allowed to speak of and i, I think importantly too um a lot of the complications that this caused a lot of the trouble that it caused for not just the children but the families uh, and the community in general. Um, it brought a lot, you would think uh, off the cuff, um, that saying, you know, I, I just had this, you know, miraculous visitation would, you know, be this cause for joy and celebration. And largely throughout most of the movie, it turns out uh, just the other. It's it's this, you know, occasion for like stress and rancor and division. And it's, you know, it actually proves to be uh, quite a difficult thing, especially for three small children, I think the oldest of which is maybe 10 years old. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we're talking about um, a time in history where uh, this was very much um, going against the grain of the philosophy of the day. All right. And so, um, and this is something that we can relate to in today's world, mm -hmm. right, as Catholics. So it's very current in terms of um, what what we're going through now and what they went through then. There's, I mean, it mentions in the intro to the movie that this is a time of, you know, progressive politics that had uh, risen to the forefront in Portugal, mm -hmm. um, you know, which, you know, by definition, you may not necessarily think to be a negative, um, except that they 
um, do explain that with that progressive attitude comes an anti-religious um, sort of attitude or philosophy. Um, it, it's sort of looked down upon, um, you know, it's, it's condescended to, you know, it's considered to be backwards and kind of ignorant because, you know, science um, becomes the thing that fills that particular vacuum once they remove it. Um, or at least um, that's the idea. It, it actually is, a, it turns out to be quite uh, unpleasant actually in its application um, and, and the way it's used um, against these particular families and uh, these three children. Hold on a second, we've got a couple of comments here. Um, we've got Claudette, uh, sorry, can't get on my phone, won't let me, but I'm here. So uh, hello, Claudette, and uh, thanks for stopping in tonight. Uh, and ah, Dr. James is already on it, of course, and uh, he says that's perfectly okay. God bless you. So uh, we've got these three small children uh, who do a fantastic job. It's, uh, you know, in the midst of World War I, uh, so there's already a lot of stress throughout Europe. Um, you know, there's a lot of poverty, you know, uh, you know disease, and, you know, it's, it's just a very difficult time in general. And so... Uh, this story is related um, in almost in, in, in a sort of recollection. And you have the, uh, the famous actor uh, Harvey Keitel, uh, who plays uh, a social scientist and a writer uh, who's interviewing the now uh, adult and elderly uh, Lucia um, as she is uh, living in a monastery uh, in 1989. So this jumps back between 1917 to 1989 as he interviews her for his book. And like the politics of the time, uh, Harvey Keitel is a secularist. So he's coming at her with a lot of skepticism, with a lot of doubt and a lot of, you know, kind of pointed questions. He's almost a little impolite um, in the way that he addresses her. Um, but I mean, he doesn't really, at, at some point I wondered, you know, why he would be that particularly you know, um, you know, rude almost, you know, and because he, he's such a skeptic, but it, it seems not necessarily an issue of them having a difference of opinion, which she admits to having a fascination with, you know, one of the, uh, you know, the lines of the movie is that she's fascinated by people who have opposing opinions from her own. Um, he seems more interested in winning the argument. Um, you know, and, and so I find those to be two different things. If you, if any of the three of us have a different opinion on something, you know, your favorite, you know, color is, you know, blue or red or orange or whatever, then, you know, maybe mine is green or, you know, purple or, you know, whatever. Um, it's not about me having to tell you that you're wrong, you know, and I'm right necessarily, but, um, there's a recurring theme of that throughout the movie, through the 1970, uh, 17 storyline and, uh, the more modern storyline where uh, Harvey Keitel is interviewing her again. All right. Could I, uh, I'd love to just comment just on that because I saw a tie between the character and how he was portrayed uh, interviewing Lu uh, mm -hmm. Sister Lucia mm -hmm. and how the, how the movie seemed to fall out and flow from some of his intriguing and, and probing questions. I, uh, especially how he, uh, he, he wondered if, if she was uh, uh, concerned about her relationship with her own mother versus the Blessed Mother. It was an unspoken question, which the movie then seemed to focus in on that relationship between Lucia and the mother. Yeah. And I thought it, it was a very modern uh, version of the story that way. It became a psychological portrayal. And that sort of seemed to be a theme throughout the movie. Um, looking at Fatima historically at that time was a very, was actually a very Catholic country, um, full of, of, of devout Catholics. And as World War I had come in and the secularists and the more socialist kinds of, uh, thinking began to, you know, dominate, um, the church got pushed aside. Um, the Catholic communities, these small villages, the people, the villagers who were kind of then looked down on as kind of simple peasant folk, maybe not that bright, um, uh, were were really talked down to and and yeah. and uh, uh, kind of cast aside as any kind of real um, uh, participant in what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so, 
for Lucia, this this was the story of her life, you know, in, in some ways. Um, so someone to come, people had been challenging, and particularly uh, um, in this uh, in this context, you know, at this point she had been in a in a convent for many many years, yeah, you know, decades. her whole life, yeah, um, yeah. and people had been questioning her and um, doubting her, accusing her, all kinds of things for a very long time. So I think one of the things about um, the, the interview with the, with the journalist was kind of alluding to the fact that there were a lot of skeptics and a lot of people who were really trying to, people don't like to be told that there are secrets and they, they can't know what they are. And then they get really mad yeah. and somebody's yeah. not coming out with it. You know, what yeah. the heck is going on here? Yeah. We want to know, you know, yeah. inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> it, was, it was no different then. And so people put that as a real challenge. That was uh, uh, that was something that certainly uh, went throughout the entirety of the movie. Um, you know, as these children were, um, you know, given this information um, from, you know, the Blessed Mother, um, you know, certain things they were instructed not to reveal. Mm -hmm. And that caused a lot of rancor. Yeah. Um, you know, especially, in, you know, like you said, it has a bit of a psychological uh, look to it, but I mean, it's also very human. Um, you know, there's this recurring thing uh, that happens where uh, people are constantly being told uh, if they're loved, it's like once a week, you know, where the you the mayor announces if, if the, you know, the soldier uh, from that particular village has been killed. So families go there to, to get some sort of news. And so there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of, you a know, lot of heartbreak pain. occurring. Yeah. It thinks a lot of, of you know, pain. Yeah. Something good. Tell us. Yeah. What it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and so, and so then you have this, you know, almost like this, this, um, this venting, you know, well, if, if you're speaking, you know, they, they, they the, the people in the village that know these children actually start to turn on them. Mm -hmm. You know, and say, well, if you, you know, are in contact, you know, with the Virgin Mother, you know, then then why is this happening? Or, you know, why did my son get killed? Or, you know, why did these sorts, you know, they're very human responses, you know, that, that you would understand. Because, you know, like Debbie said, that there's just a lot of pain going on and people are just in a time, it must have been awful, World War One, if you're living in Europe or, you know, with any anywhere in the world, uh, you know, where a country is participating in something like that. And people are just dying in mass. Um, and what are the children just, told? If, if, if things don't change, a worse war is coming. Yeah. It's going to be worse than this. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think one of the things. Exactly. <laughs> the uplifting, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of the things they were told were things that they didn't want to hear. You know, they not. wanted to hear they yeah. wanted to hear feel good things. You know, they wanted comfort. Yeah. You know, and they wanted comfort, and they wanted you know you know someone to say that you know my son is alive, and you know or you know this this miracle is going to occur, and you know take this pain away from me. Yeah. You know, because you know you know I've just lost my husband, or you know whatever, and they didn't get any of that. Yeah. And so, you know, what they were basically told, the basic instructions threat were to pray the rosary every day mm -hmm. and not to insult the Lord. Right. Don't you know, offend the him. Yeah, the very Lord is already offended. insulted enough. He's very yeah. much offended. And that was the thing that I, I took a little bit of issue with in the, in, the, in the film, in that there was a lot of emphasis on the pain and the, and the rancor and the, the, the politics and the things of the day. Yeah. And not as much uh, emphasis that was placed on um, the answer. The answer. Yeah. Um, the yeah. answer was to to pray, to yeah. trust, to to not insult the Lord. Um, yeah. And so much of the much of the the, the real um, meat of the messages was really skimmed over. And this oh, yeah. kind of just became Lucia's story, not yeah, it, really the was, story of Fatima. Yeah, which, it, again, not, for a modern sensibilities, I could understand the decision of the producers to yeah. try and uh, approach everybody from that door initially just to get them on board and not make it a miracle story right from the beginning, a holy, right. holy story, and, uh, and a recounting of just the tale, uh, but to try and get people on board with the historicity of it and in the process, all the complications, especially of the of the church officials, 
and the state. Now, the yeah. church had their double thing of not wanting to be embarrassed by yet another, you know, uh, phantasmagorical story from a child uh, that proves to be wrong, right? Yeah. And they didn't want that embarrassment, which a church is always very slow in recognizing uh, revelations or uh, private revelations and, and apparitions. But and rightly was, so. And, and rightly, rightly so. so. But, but then I there was also the fear of the state. They didn't want to be shut down. <laughs> well, a very familiar feeling today, all right? But I, I, I was Go just ahead. going to say when I, when I listed it in the notes, um, I, I just listed it as the bureaucracies. Yeah. The bureaucracies kind of took over, whether it was the bureaucracy of the church or the bureaucracy of government. Um, you know, they kind of tried to seize control back, you know, and take yeah. control of the narrative as yeah. to, and, and to reshape it. Yeah. You know, it, it wasn't to give the children a platform to speak. No. It was to try to run it through their particular filter, which is to either, well, in both cases, which is to say they're just making this up. Um, right. Hold hold on a second. We have some more comments here. Um, okay. So, oh, Kate's back. Hello, Kate. I saw Fatima uh, about six to nine months ago on Netflix. I invited a Protestant friend still yet to occur. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it might happen. It might happen. Uh, hold on a second. Um, a lot of pain and doubt. Claudette says, yeah. Um, cool how three children carried the faith for all of them. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. again, as you pointed out, Michael, <laughs> against all the attempts to control the narrative, Our Lady came in and swept it away. And yeah. thank God for the movie, you know, allowing that to be the message. All right. Um, down the road, it was that uh, the miracles did happen. Our Lady did appear. All right. Proofs were, were, were given. And, and that's Part of the dilemma, a lot of time, the organized either governments or religion have with a perf uh, uh, piety, uh, the piety of the people, popular piety, when it gets so intense <laughs> that they can't control it. Mm -hmm. All right? It controls the narrative altogether. And this is God. <laughs> if you wish, this is the divine will stepping in and taking mm -hmm. over. <laughs> yeah, and because it's frustrating for them that they couldn't control a six-year-old. Uh, Jacinta was six years old. Yeah. You know, they couldn't control yeah. a six-year-old, yeah. uh, much less a ten-year-old. And yeah. um, uh, you know, I think again, one of the things that was sorely missing from the from the film was the the perseverance of the children yeah. and the the faithfulness of the children um, and the holiness of the children. But these were holy children these these little people prayed and sacrificed and suffered and asked to suffer welcomed the suffering because that's what our lady asked of them and phew, missed the boat um it showed really how lucia suffered with her family and certainly how they suffered with the bureaucracy but how they suffered for god how they suffered for his sake yeah. for Our Lady's sake, um, for the good of all of the people. Um, and um, I think this is part of, of course, history that, that we know now from yeah. many accounts. And that, we can't do everything in the movie. I know they no. can't do all the messages contained, even in a great story like this. Right. And still and, and get I'm just a pointing, message across. Right. right. Uh, but I'm just pointing out that there was just, just so much um, there's, this is a very, very rich, this is probably one of the richest apparitions ever to occur in, in the Catholic church. So this is very, very, very rich, very, very. And powerful, very powerful, powerful that the popular press recorded and yeah. people today still don't know about mm -hmm. what's that, yeah. right? Still don't get it. Um, yeah. uh, well, I mean, it probably has a broader outreach by narrowing some of the story i mean you probably i think well, you're yeah, right I'm they're sure. missing yeah, some yeah, of the absolutely. thing but it, it yeah. reaches more people mm -hmm. you know and you, so it, you you're you know proverbially put more butts in the seats mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing okay we have to take this but it, it's going to get out there to more people um as opposed to you know if they had made you know a strictly you know an, a purely devout you know story it, it would have been you know i think it would have checked all the appropriate boxes um, but it probably would have been for a much smaller production. True. But I think, too, that the people who will be listening tonight to this progress, we're in the future, hmm. um, 
would be the butts in the scene <laughs> that want to <laughs> see God represented and the whole mm -hmm. and Blessed Mother properly. Uh, uh, Fair enough. Uh, yeah, shown. And so uh, this movie had uh, an agenda that was was like a point. It had to cut stuff out to get the one message across. Okay. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we can kind of like narrow down what was that message? What was the message they were shooting for? Um, that, what do you think it was? Well, um, again, it, it was, I think, personalized. I think they focused in on the story of the child, Lucia, mostly. Okay. And her um, her dilemma of knowing what she knew that the lady was real and came to her and the pressure from everyone and everywhere to, to relent and, and not um, hold fast. All right. And that uh, even from her own family, even from her own family, her own, her own mother. Yeah. Her, her own mother, her, her own, own mother said stuff. Her own real mother would never have said. <laughs> All right. But, uh, but yes, to intensify the conflict and her need for standing in her faith, all right? And then at the end, when the Our Lady's miracle occurred, in a sense, it was more an affirmation of Lucia's faith than it was the Blessed Mother's uh, proof to the world of the need and the intense need for conversion in the world before disaster occurred, you know? It's an excellent point. Yeah, it's an excellent point. Why Why do you think, here's a question, I, and I was considering it as I was watching this and listening to Harvey Keitel and then that mayor. Um, why is it so important for some people to disprove? Now, I mean, if I looked at Harvey Keitel, he didn't strike me as, you know, not a bad person necessarily. He's coming at this from a particular viewpoint. And I think he and the, he and the sister had, uh, you know, kind of a, friendly poking where they kind of poked at each other you know and they're both yeah. older you yeah. know i think she was older than he was or you know at that age you know and, and real that by 89 she should have been uh, right. but you know he's no spring chicken either you know so they're just kind of going back and forth with some banter um the mayor was much more abrasive and you know abusive um but you know the end result in both cases to me and maybe i'm looking at it incorrectly so if i am you know let, uh, tell me what you think um why is it so important, so important, I think, for both of them to, to disprove the story? Uh, again, I think it's the, the, the nature of the supernatural is a beyond control. And mm -hmm. to be able to, uh, to discredit supernatural events is also uh, the idea behind the progressive moving beyond the superstitious religion, all right, which they would... Uh, would say were the causes of all the troubles in the world. Uh, we're hearing similar things today, by the way. All right? mm. But um, if they could discount that, in fact, God doesn't exist, then their utopian uh, philosophies and, and, and goals and, and dreams would not be opposed. And this was opposition, which was making their job of creating a better world through man's own ideas very difficult. And very sensational. And I'm sure that there was an element of fear in the sensationalism or the the response from these peasant villagers to to what was happening because, you know, as we saw in the film, it was very quickly exponentially exploded in terms yeah. of people in, in terms of people coming to the apparitions on the 13th of every month. And every month it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so this became something to to control um, that became more and more difficult and more and more intense. And, it would, you know, it, and then there is that element of fear of we're, we're losing our grip here. We're losing, we're losing our control. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's true too. But I mean, I, it would be unnerving, you know, if a hundred people just suddenly showed up in your backyard, Yes. you know, and, and yes. then next month, 500 people just showed up in your backyard that's and right. then, 3,000 people showed up in your backyard the month. You're like, well, well hold on a second, you know? Well, and you know, you see, uh, it's, it's a difficult thing. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Financially, they, they, um, yeah. they were they're, ruined. Yeah, yeah, they were very, they were very tangible. Uh, there was a very tangible cost. Well, uh, the nature, yeah. and the other part too, the nature of rationalism, which is the idea that a man has the answers on how to make his world better, mm -hmm. right? Grace and God, are not real 
they're not real. They're fantasies, they're crutches, all of these ideas. And this progressive mentality that they actually point very clearly there was that they were to inspire the people to a better world. And when the people would not go that way, because instinctively they wanted God, they, res they, they flipped from inspiring to oppression, all right, to con uh, uh, compliant uh, in imposition, all right, and then violence. And so it went right on down that that's kind of the root, that kind of utopian man's idea goes when, when people instinctively want, want goodness, God, and grace. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes dystopian very quickly. It does. Um, it fall at the bottom falls out because there's no, there's no foundation. You know, there's no foundation there, and it collapses very quickly under any sort of, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, any sort of differing thought. And uh, you know, the only thing that really uh, works uh, to keep it in place after that is is aggression, That's right. uh, aggression and violence, and and know, God's and, counteract is a simple little thing of just making the sun dance around the sky and look like it's going to beat and blow you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that'll get your attention. Let me do this little thing. Let me do this little thing. Yeah, there you go. go. Up in the air and beat that, guys, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. good luck with that. Yeah, yeah chew on that yeah. one. Yeah. H hold on a second. We got some more comments here. Um, hold on a second. Let's see. Let's see. Kate. I recall hearing or reading about how the children were traumatized by the questioning the, of the adults in the room, parents and priests, et cetera. The mother portrayed by the actress is very stern. Yes, I've seen her only once before, I think in a Christmas movie of all things. Yeah. Um, of late, and that's another thing. I mean, with the exception of Harvey Keitel, um, you know, no, no A-list stars in this. These are, you know, th these are modest productions. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's not necessarily from like a firm films or anything like that, but they're yeah. they're smaller, you know, smaller productions and, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, probably pulled in from, not from the uh, the a Hollywood list. Uh, but I, ha I have to say, too, on the other side of it, that uh, the way they filmed it was lovely. It really I, I was going to say oh I, I gosh, thought cinem yeah. the cinematography was beautiful. Yeah. Right. I, and I the way they they tied in. Her, her moments of almost experience the noumenal presence of God through nature, you mm -hmm. know, yes. the sun, the wind, yeah, right, the, the wind. grass, all yeah. of that the, just really yeah. set you in that really you felt God was about to do something, right? Yeah, yeah. Th there was this intuitive thing with the wind that just stopped everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd be in the middle and then all of a sudden this wind would just sort of, you know, it would almost like grab your attention and it, people would just stop like, what just happened? You know, like something just passed through. Yeah, you know, or something like that. Yeah, a plus yeah. plus on that. <laughs> yeah, the the, yes. the 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 opening scene, yes. um, in the cave where yes. the angel of Portugal appears, you know, and you know she sees this bird, this dove, just kind of flying at the top of the cave, and then it goes by, and then you see the silhouette change, you know, and then um, the idea that at the initial deceased reading. Uh, the angel would appear to get appeared again to comfort that one mother who just realized she had lost her son in the war, you know, and she was right there the entire time, uh, yeah. but only uh, Lucia could see it. You know, um, that was it was really yeah, visually it was it was very effective. It was, it was beautifully done. Actually. Yeah, it was I, beautifully done. I remember years ago, uh, there were older versions of this story. Yes. Um, and my mother used to, she liked, uh, I think the, the original, well, not the original, but one of the older productions was The Miracle of Our Lady of Fatima. Yeah. Um, and I don't remember it that much. Uh, I think my dad may still have the, the DVD copy or something like that. I'll have to take a look. And uh, maybe one time we'll have to do some sort of compare and contrast or something <laughs> like that. And what's missing and, you know, what's different about this and, you know, this, that and the other. Oh, you'll get uh, a lot of comments on that one, too. Because yeah. people are are very pro or con. <laughs> they well, really are. Yeah, it says, hold on. Of late, I've been finding myself saddened by Protestant and Catholic brothers and sisters' attitudes towards our mother in a study group I've been in for almost 10 years. Dr. James says the film lacked soul. 
I was disappointed. Beautiful music and very beautiful, uh, very few beautiful moments. I suppose yeah. I was expecting powerful moments that never really came. Well, what was missing really was the father's heart, right? Mm -hmm. The father's longing for his children to come back to him. Um, that was in the words that Our Lady said very briefly, but you didn't get the feel of it. You didn't really see it through his eyes, his 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 pain and his love for for all of us. All right, and and that suffering. All right, we saw the suffering of the victims of war and the parents, but not God the Father's suffering. Hmm. And there's the soul, <laughs> and it was all about that. It really is, and it still is. All right. But that message didn't come through very strong. Okay. All right. Uh, hold on. Kate's here. Very thankful to be learning about living in the divine will and meeting new brothers and sisters in the traditional Catholic community. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Uh, and it's Kate, interesting Kate. to point out that this is 1917 that this event happened. All right. Yes. And the divine will for Janitor uh, Luisa Picaretta. Um, had now <clears throat> been given the gift of living in the divine will and had been living in it for 17 years in 1917. So she was right there during this apparition and the Blessed Mother was coming to her in a year or two to talk about what her life was in the, the Virgin Mary in the kingdom of the divine will. So all of this are, they were living at the same concurrent time which is very interesting because they are the whole other set of divine messages right there. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, it's a time of great turbulence, you know, uh, th throughout the world, you know, and, you know, this That's time right. where, you know, everybody is just, you know, going at it with everybody. And then you have a small pause and, you know, like the, uh, you know, like the mother says, you know, it's something worse is coming. And Louisa's uh, prophecies that our Lord gave her concurred. Mm -hmm. And with great detail in the prophecies, too, which also happened. <laughs> so, yeah, this is not an isolated event that just happened to this one girl or three girls and this one uh, moment. Right? There's a history. There's a trail of these kind of private revelations, appearances, which are exploding today. Mm -hmm. right? This was kind of a, a beginning right after Lourdes, right, right? that uh, is now all over the place. At a way you can't even track. It's too much. Can you can you expand on that a little bit? All right. Um, not being a Marian apparition follower, and now Debbie, you can kick in more. All right. But we have uh, in our day Our Lady of Medjugorje, who uh, you probably have heard about her or not, but all the people listening have. All right. Okay. And uh, and the message is there, and the people who have been following this and going to Yugoslavia. All right, to that shrine, there's been incredible conversions, lives changed, all right? And again, the, the messages are always very simple, all right? Pray, 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 repent, all right? Receive the Blessed Sacrament, pray the rosary, all right? Amend your lives now, because otherwise God has to do something to get our attention. And unfortunately, those things are like chastisements, wars, ways that will stop people right, and make them realize that they're not in control and they're not doing God's will. And it's time to come back to him. And, I, and, and, and God keeps sending us our mother over and over and over. Um, yeah. Lords, Lords, you know, Larry mentioned Lords. Um, you know, this happened um, in, in this time frame. This, you know, Fatima came that many years after Lords. Um, after Lourdes, you know, we had we had Louisa Picaretta who was um, receiving this uh, miraculous uh, dictation, being the secretary of the divine will and showing us how God actually wanted us to live in his will. At the same time, as the crow flies, you know, an hour away, we had Padre Pio, um, uh, the great saint who who was was um, um, manifesting extraordinary experiences um, with the stigmata and with bilocation, all kinds of things. And so these things, and, and, and of course, in our, in our lives, we've had many apparitions. I don't think anything is as prolific probably as Medjugorje. Um, but you go to, you, you, you see in Medjugorje these, these lives 
that are completely transformed by this experience of being in this proximity of being in this place um, where the Blessed Mother is is coming to us and continues to send us these very simple messages. The messages are always very simple and they're always very direct and they're always very, um, you know, attached to prayer, confession, amending our lives, receiving, you know, the, the, the sacraments and, and prayer. Yeah. And these it's messages are found all over the world. Akita Japan, all right, where Akita. our ladies telling about what can be happening to us. And this seems to be the mission that Jesus has given the Blessed Mother is to come down and frequent us and continually um, encourage us in any way she can to avoid some of the things that we're bringing on ourselves. Uh, Rwanda, which we know mostly as the genocidal you know, capital of the world, was actually the site of another apparition of Our Lady, again, warning her in advance of what was coming to get people to pray to avoid it. And the idea that prayer can mitigate the, the effects of, or eliminate chastisements because they're only for our, our love. They're only to help us come back to God and to save as many souls as possible. They're not punishments. <laughs> no, right? these wars, the wars and calamities, you, you know, you, you, uh, Rwanda, you know, this great genocide. Um, these wars and catastrophes that we see, and, and certainly we're seeing a number of natural um, um, natural phenomenon going on right now with volcanoes, earthquakes, all, all kinds of things that are disrupting in the earth. Um, is God not punishing us? but giving us the opportunity to pay attention, yeah. to, to get a heads up. Um, right. And right. like, you know, you know, like any good parent would with a child, <laughs> you know, try to get their attention in the, in the best way possible. And, um, you know, so he, he continues and keeps our blessed mother very, very busy um, coming to us, talking to us, um, schooling us, trying to teach us, and um, unfortunately, we don't, don't listen. pay attention. And it's a, a, the, the movie, and when it was doing that reflection of of the divine and nature, how creation was part of this experience. Uh, it's tied together that um, all of creation groans waiting for the appearance of the sons of men it's scripture right and the idea that uh, as man continues doing his own will and not god's will right that nature is offended on god's behalf mm -hmm. and so all these uh, climate change calamities are uh, which we want to again control even more right um mm -hmm. are actually uh, results and effects of man's inhumanity to man all right and it's uh insulting and offending God uh, and his laws. Uh, that has been, you know, again, oh, that's old fashioned superstition that we have to leave behind. And, and yet it won't go away. And it continues and along with Our Lady's mission to try and drumbeat that message into us till we wake up. So that's, again, came a little bit into the movie, but we'd like to see more of that. That would be yeah. our message. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a growing, um, I think that the, the faith-based, um, you know, cinema, it, it's, it's expanding. Am I correct in, in saying so? Um, that these types of movies, there's more and more of that there's becoming a market, you know, uh, production companies are, are catching on to the fact that people want to see these sorts of things. Uh, year round, you know, not just holiday based, you know, in the classics and these sorts of things, but new productions. Yeah. And, and they, uh, they happen at various levels of, of professionalism, don't they? Mm -hmm. Right. There are those that are like just top notch. And I think Mel Gibson's would be right up there. And I look forward to his mm -hmm. next one. Yeah. And then, you know, um, uh, professionals like yourself that are looking at quality of acting, quality of production, all of those things, they kind of descend a little bit down into kind of hokey sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so we're always hoping for uh, high-end productions that have good messages and, and, and are palatable to a contemporary audience. 
even uh, even being able to see uh, you know uh, Paul, the Apostle of Christ. I mean, it wasn't um, it wasn't available on any of the standard platforms. I ended up having to purchase a copy, but they're you know they're really inexpensive, so it's not a problem. But I'm thinking back, and you mentioned Mel Gibson. You know, I mean, of course, you know he's you know just a fantastic actor and director. Um, you know, and has been for for forever. But I was thinking of last week going back uh, as far as I think it was 1955 to Beckett, ah. uh, you know, where you had, you know, the great Peter O'Toole, mm. you know, fresh off of Lawrence of Arabia, you know, you had Richard Burton, you know, I mean, just, just you know, the absolute, you know, creme de la creme of, you know, the acting pool, yeah. you know, putting it out there like this, whereas now, um, you know, you know, and you could go further on, you know, Charlton Heston and, you know, how, you know, uh, you know, Max von Sydow and, you know, uh, Jeffrey Hunter and, you know, uh, how many, I mean, how many different actors are in um, Edward G. Robinson, you know, the Ten Commandments, you know, it's just the absolute <laughs> best. Yeah. Um, Romero. Man, Romero yeah. was another big film. Um, yeah. Um, you know, Anthony Quinn, you know, how many, you know, in Barabbas or something like that. But I mean, now, you know, this, I, I think there's a resurgence, but it hasn't reached that point where, you yeah. know, the big, you know, A-list stars of today well, you uh, know, are, are it, catching it, on to it with the exception of uh, Mel Gibson, who's a bit on the outs, who's a bit on the outs anyway. Yeah. 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 He's kind of, there's well, a that's... beautiful film called Therese. Uh, that was um, was produced by St. Luke Productions by Leonardo De Filippis. Uh, it's a beautiful film about St. Therese. Um, it, I think, it was uh, produced and distributed, but I don't think that it really made any big um, right. impact. But it's a beautiful yeah. film. Um, mm. There's just not the money behind the investment. Yeah, for the, yeah. the investment of big production companies in the day mm -hmm. as opposed to like DeMille, you know, yeah. doing the Ten Commandments right. or, you know, whomever else, you know. Uh, you it was know, a different back. era. You yeah. know, we were talking about a totally different era and um, where people appreciated and wanted to see those kinds of things. King of Kings. Yeah. Um, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, yeah. Excellent. You know, these were excellent productions that were done. And, and the current. High dollar. The Chosen, which I don't know if you've uh, got that on your list to do, but that's an excellent ongoing mm -hmm. series, mm -hmm. high level. Yeah, I'll have to beautiful. take a look. Okay, beautifully I'll done. To take a look. Okay. Yeah, beautifully done. It's a series. Yes. Yes. Okay. We're going into uh, third, third season, season three. Third, third season. Yeah. Where Where are you accessing it? You have to get it offline. You, oh, uh, really? Oh, it's so you, you have can to download the app. app. I have it. You get phone. an app. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's an app. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they okay. have a pay it forward approach so that if someone can afford it, they get it for free because other people paid it forward. Okay. And that's how well, that's they fund their production. Huh. That's yeah. interesting. Very um, out of the box. Very out okay. of the box. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Well, it's a, uh, you know, you can create almost any economy you want to nowadays. You know, people are catching on, you know, like, mm -hmm. well, have been, I guess, for the past 10 years or so, just creating, you know, you can create almost anything nowadays. So that's, okay, okay I'll take a look. I'll take a look. <laughs> very anyway, nice. Anyway, I enjoyed Vadima very much for what it offered. Uh, yeah. And I'm encouraged all the time. <laughs> Anytime I hear a bit of God, it's good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, if especially if you're not someone who has watched uh, a lot of faith-based movies. Um, I think it's a good entry level uh, movie to start with. I mean, it's right there on an app that every, you know, on a streaming service that everyone has. Exactly. Um, you just have to dig it up. Um, it's about an hour and 45 minutes. It's not mm -hmm. slow at all. It's no. entertaining. No. There are solid performances. Uh, like you said, the cinematography is done very well. Um, there aren't any real A-list stars except for Harvey Keitel, um, yeah. but everyone does a fantastic job, and it's a fascinating story, more so because it's a true story. Yes, um, and it's a good entry point. As yeah, as say, it's a good entry point, and um, uh, if it it piques people's interest to to look in and and dig dig deeper to find the the really yeah. important details, then that's great. Yeah, and yeah. you can look, you can always dig up. I mean, because now you can stream almost anything. You can start to look up after you get through that, you know, some of the older productions, mm -hmm. you know, and then in the related searches, things pop up. And, you know, before you know, you're kind of, you're off to the races. Yeah, yeah the, the 2008 production 
is definitely a great next step for those who watch this. All right, okay. has a much more of the rest of the, the story, the context and the message. Okay. Okay. I highly um, recommend it. Is there anything else? I mean, are we? Is there, I mean, what would you like to? I mean, have I have I not opened up a you know an avenue for you or something that you wanted to explore? Something well, you wanted to touch on? Either of you. I think there's a lot of rabbit holes, but I think you did a great job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I'm just a facilitator. So you guys are uh, much more knowledgeable about this, but uh, I usually can run a conversation. So well, thank I, you. I, I, really enjoyed, I really enjoyed discussing it. So thank you for- It's a pleasure yeah. being with you, Michael. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, for same here. here. Same here. I, I've enjoyed this a great deal. It's, uh, yeah. it's been a good time. Thank you. Um, okay. So, I mean, that's episode four. Um, and, you know, there are more episodes coming and uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, Dr. James and I, we, we have to create some sort of list. I mean, we are only on episode four, um, so we really don't have a roster yet. Um, we're just kind of, you know, like I said, we started out with, um, oh God, what was that? Uh, uh, the Scarlet and the Black, and then we went with Apostle of Paul, Apostle of Christ, and then we went with Beckett, and we realized this was sort of a, the martyrdom hole is kind of, a, it's, you know, it's, it's a little grim. It's a little bloody, grim. A little bloody. Yeah, it's just a little, I mean, I love the Scarlet and the Black. I actually ended up buying the book, and yeah. then I ended up buying uh, a copy of uh, about the true story of Monsignor O'Flaherty. And then uh, I ended up buying a copy of Paul. And then I ended up buying a copy of Beckett because I loved Beckett anyway, uh, but I hadn't seen it in about 15 years. So, you know, and, you know, 15 years, it's not the same Internet experience that, you know, it is now where you can just pick something up for five dollars. And it's not uh, the faith, not the same faith experience. We grow along in our faith and then mm -hmm. we can watch old things that we like. Well, it was all right. And now we get the meanings that were buried that we never saw before. Yeah. Yeah. When we talked of so much about, uh, cause I covered Beckett by myself last week uh, and Dr. James was in here and uh, we were talking about Beckett's pride, you know, that he, he just basically, he didn't, he didn't look at his conscience. Yeah. You know, he, he spent the large portion of his adult life, you know, with the King, but just, it, you know, he deliberately had to look away from a lot of things until one day he just decided he couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and he had firm ground to stand on. And of course, you know, there was a heavy price for that. But, you know, yeah. he, you know, he got his soul, you know, that sort of thing. So I don't know what's coming up next week. We will be here. Let me close out these last couple of comments and then we'll wrap it up. Um, Kate says, enjoy listening and being here with you all. Uh, thank you very much, Kate. Thank Kate's you, here Kate. every week. I look forward to she meeting said, you. <laughs> yeah, she says, thank you. Um, um, our lady knows our level of disobedience, hence why she continues to come through God's mercy. Uh, Gara yeah. Bandal, Akita, and now Medju okay, Medjugorje? Medjugorje. 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 Yeah. They are connected to Fatima, continuation. Uh, yes, I am not certain of Medjugor Medjugorje as I have seen it tear my first husband's family apart some 25 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I guess that's pretty much it for this evening. My thanks once again to Lawrence Leopold and to Debbie Bird Smith uh, for stopping in tonight and uh, shooting the breeze with me a little bit about this uh, movie. Uh, please check it out. Great fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really good movie. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Take care and uh, God bless. God bless. Bye-bye.